to order at uh, 6.03. Is there any adjustments to the agenda? All right, hearing no adjustments, um, I look for a motion to approve the minutes of Monday, October 7th, and Friday, October 18th. For the first one's our regular, second one's a special meeting. So move. Second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Great. All right, um, uh, public comment. Oh, good, we got Patrick now. Cut. All right, hearing no public comment, we'll go on to board comment. Just one comment, we had a, a, a nice uh, article in the um, Herald about the uh, AOE's uh, acting secretary of education impressed with and celebrating our academic achievements um, and visit with you and uh, just saying that um, that's great to hear and it's great to share with everybody to let us know what we're all about. Okay. Thanks, great. Bill, for mentioning. I didn't realize that I had got, I was hoping it got covered. I didn't, haven't had a chance to read the Herald yet. So I'm glad to know that made it in there. Excellent. Is there any other board comment? Okay, well, let's move on to the uh, reports to the board. Superintendent's report. Um, so you have my report in hand, which had a bunch of information in it, um, including what um, Mr. Edgerton just was speaking to um, in regards to a shout out of the governor's office around a news release and the interim secretary of some growth that we've seen in regards to our literacy work, um, but also in um, the work that they partnered with us in regards to revising our curricular documents. Um, so that was, it was nice to get acknowledged for that. Um, I had a uh, coffee and conversation this past Friday at the Village Sandwich Shop in Bethel. Mary Shell is still working to finalize details to get uh, some community conversations within our SUD. Um, we just had, the, we were working on a community conversation here in town. It's just the time it didn't work out for the location specific to this past week. So, but no, one's coming soon. Okay. We'll get it advertised. Um, and then I also want to remind the board, I did send out information um, recently, again, with notes um, in the landing page for the Commission on the Future of Vermont Public Education. Um, that should have been in all your emails last week. And also, just a refresher in regards to the yield bill and how that had an impact on how we're gonna compute common uh, level of appraisals, CLAs. We will go over that as well um, in your upcoming budget meetings to okay. walk you through all that you know, like we typically do, but explain to you how that change works. It's really supposed to be, it was meant to be, so it's that that doesn't like, have it as dramatic of an impact on your finalized tax rates. Mm. Like it was I, legislation meant to try to help deal with some of what we've seen in some of our towns where significant drops in the CLAs were really driving forces in regards right. to. So they've, finalized they've tax ad rates. adjusted so they, that. Yeah, yes, they've taken an attempt to try to make it so it's in that we're not going to have because towns are frankly on a waiting list in regards to getting reappraisals. Reappraisals. Yeah. So this was an attempt to try to smooth some things over in regards to CLAs. Okay. So I'll explain to you how that works in upcoming uh, budget presentations. Um, and then otherwise, I will entertain any questions folks may have. Yes, does anybody have any questions for our superintendent? All right, off the hook. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to our principal's report then. So you have my report in front of you. A couple of things that I wanted to highlight. We're really excited uh, to enter a new partnership with Gifford mm. and mm. Thank you. a yeah. pediatrician. Uh, they will be here Wednesday the 13th to look at the space with the actual um, pediatrician and then December 4th we'll start taking patients 
That's um, really exciting news. It's mm -hmm. very exciting, and we have kind of our targeted team even worked a little bit today to just kind of review based on some school nurse information. We've had new families move in and not be able to access pediatricians. We've had families with transportation issues, so kind of really start to, um, not that it's not open to everyone, but make sure that we're really connecting with some of those families mm -hmm. to also get them established care with this. And this will happen twice a month. So every other Wednesday, um, based on need, basically, half day right now. And we'll facilitate transportation from Stockbridge yes. to yes. here, just like we do with our dental hub. So it's open to students across both campuses. Right. Yes, great. Even though the space will be here. Right. But and then on that same note, the dental hub will be here at the end of the week. Okay. Um, this week. And has, she has two full days, so I think she's always busy. Yes. When she's here, which is great. Um, so that was one thing I really wanted to point out to folks. Uh, we are we almost finished our first round of parent-teacher conferences. So we've had lots of families in the building between this uh, this week currently and last week. Most of them were last week before the Halloween candy um, crush <laughs> arrived. Uh, so that was um, great to see families in there and just meet with classroom teachers and have a good read on what's going on. Um, I'm trying to think. There seems like a lot. There was a lot. Um, and then we're almost, believe it or not, at the end of the first trimester. So by between now and the time that we'll see you guys next for Port Cards, we'll have We'll be getting ready to go home. Nice. Wow. But, yeah. So, take any questions. Excellent. There's uh, definitely a lot of great uh, things that you've written about in your report. There's definitely a lot of great things happening. Um, a, oh, lot, if, a lot of work being done. If you're up for bingo, we have PTO joint bingo again next Friday. Okay. Is it next Friday? It's next Friday. The, I gotta look at account. Yeah, and I like the visit with the uh, sustainability conference yeah. um, right on. That's uh, yep. everybody's responsibility. And I'm a strong believer that we need to inculcate our kids with those beliefs and values earlier the better. Mm -hmm. um, and they can be the leaders, um, and I've seen it happen with their parents. Yeah. Um, yeah. And whether we're talking about sustainability or water conservation or recycling, they can do it, and so uh, I just love the fact that we're going to participate, and I hope that will be a, become a, a tradition here yeah. at our site. Thank you. Excellent. Yes, PTO, that is great, and we're excited to see the outcome because there's some good projects coming out of that. Um, and then PTO bingo is Friday at 6. Doors <laughs> open at 5.30 for your cards <laughs> next Friday the 15th. 15th, okay. Yeah. Oh, it it packed the place last time so That's they're great. excited to do it again as a combined effort great and the location is uh in the gym here in the okay, gym. rochester gym yeah great uh is there any other questions for um lindy in regards to her principal's report or comments okay let's move on to the business manager's report then good evening everyone you have my report. It outlines all the wonderful things that we're doing in the business office during the month of November and all the state reports that we have to file. In addition to that, uh, we are working through draft two of our FY26 budgets and auditors were here last week working on the single audits for the entities that hit the 750,000 threshold of federal dollars and they'll be back uh, this week to wrap that up so we should start to see more draft audits over the next couple of weeks excellent does anybody have any questions for tara i had one um, comment on one two three four the fifth bullet uh, tara revisions to prior year adm due to oe aoe aoe's um so are, are they screwing up or is and, and why should that happen 
So this is if we had students, and Ray can interject if I speak incorrectly. Um, this is if we had students that were not reported in our prior year revisions, or if there's students that were missing, as ADM is a rolling average, we want to make sure each fiscal year, school year is accurate. Yep. So, so how Ray, does it become we, inaccurate? Ray's working on ADM right now. I think what this bullet is about is we submit the AOE looks it over, and then we have a time period where we can resubmit. Oh, so okay. typically what happens with that is it could be a student who, so students that attend, typically this is where the most discrepancies have and where we're constantly working with other districts is that we will have a student on our rolls, let's say going to Middlebury, and we'll know, AOE will send us the report and we'll note they didn't report the student in Middlebury on our behalf, which is what they're supposed to do. Mm. So that, that time period then allows us to say, whoa, 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 we have a student on our records indicating they're going to Middlebury. Middlebury, why didn't you report this student? Got it. It could be then that Middlebury says, well, because that student actually transferred to Harwood, Harwood should have reported that <laughs> student, right? So then Ray's checking in with Harwood. But that's why they give us this period to resubmit. Okay, so it's not AOE screwing up. It's, it gives us an opportunity to get make sure the data is, is accurate. Correct. Thank you. And that's Ray's number one priority. Has been in the last several weeks, but throughout this month. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Is there any further questions for Tara? Okay. Um, White River Valley SU Policy Committee. Policies C5, C6, and C7, revisions and readings. So these are policies that were brought- C5, C6, and C7 have been all been revised at the policy committee. Um, so C5, uh, firearms, um, is very similar to your last policy. The biggest change here is that the policy committee does not like making the statement it is the policy of the White River Valley Supervisory Union yeah, that's right. because it's a policy. So you'll see that it's worded differently in the initial paragraph um, in general otherwise within this policy um, there was a couple other grammatical things but in that in that specific policy nothing of substance changed it was really the introductory okay. um, sentence in regards to C6 um, frankly the revisions the VSBA made the policy C6 added in um, definitions and okay. also just provided, um, if you look in regards to defining um, 16 VSA, um, subsection 563.24, and it acknowledges that at the bottom of the policy, that, wouldn't, that footer wouldn't have been in your prior policy. So that was the revision there. Um, so, um, sorry, home study students, is that what we typically call homeschool stu students? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That just want to clarify that. Yeah. <laughs> that sign up to do some type of program yep. with us, right? Um, and then in regards to student attendance, this one um, has the most substantive change. And again, it's mostly in regards to... Um, just better defining um, in regards to the policy what truant means compared to the prior one. Um, it also provides, again, if you look at the footnotes, um, it cites in statute where these things are, are where truancy is cited in law. And our okay. prior policy didn't have that clearly defined in regards to the footnotes, so we added that reference. Um, in regards to where in 16 VSA these things can be found. So, the, so this is our kind of our first review, mm -hmm. and then all the district's um, feedback goes back to the policy committee. The policy committee considers... If there's, if there's substantive yeah. feedback. Yep. Yeah. And then... And then there's one more, is, is the next, our December meeting is the time that we're going to be voting on this, or what's the timetable? If we haven't had it, if, no, if none of you have given us feedback, right, yeah. like, because we'll have typically, Bill, the way I, for these, 
These are all policies we had in place that have been revised. Yeah. Unless a board has really taken like issue with one of them, we should be ready to go by the second reading. I can, I'll get a sense here in the yeah. next couple weeks. And if you have changes, email Patrick and I. And again, if it's if there's like concerns for folks about the revisions, then we put the pause sign up and I bring it back to the committee and say, you know, the RSUD board has concerns in regards to the truancy policy here. And yeah, I, bring okay. that I just have a couple comments if it's okay. Yep. We, it's just, uh, one is under sanctions, under firearms uh, policy C5 revision. Um, it has uh, the uh, a student that uh, uh, possibly has violated the firearms uh, policy um, will go to the school board um, through the superintendent. And I guess my question is, normally, I was under the impression that we normally try to do most of our policy stuff through principal to the superintendent, and the superintendent makes a decision. And if that decision does not meet the favor of the petitioner, the petitioner has the right to come to the board, and then we're kind of the final arbitrators. In this case, it appears to me that we don't have that decision power with you or the superintendent's office. It goes directly to us. And so is that something that is a legal requirement? It goes to us directly? Because I am much more comfortable getting the guidance and having this, uh, the, the, the power in the office of the superintendent making a decision, in this case, on the, uh, bringing a firearm um, or having a firearm on our premises. And then we've got the, the power of that decision made by the superintendent for the board to consider in our consideration. So is there a reason this is the way it is? And yeah. is there an so, opportunity to open it uh, to our normal practice? Statute says that it should go, if a student brings a firearm on school property, that yep. they should go in front of the board for an expulsion hearing, okay? Superintendent can't expel, only the board can expel. So it'd be an expulsion hearing, at which time the way that those hearings work is school principal, administration, right, would provide all their facts in regards to determining how, how they determined, right, and concluded that a firearm was on school property. And then would allow the student and possibly legal representation to represent their side to that story sometimes it can be yes we did it wasn't intentional but we did bring it the administration meeting the superintendent it would be then my practice to then provide you with a recommendation of one of those four mm -hmm. but at the end of the day it would still be your decision right whether or not you example would determine that Yes, there was a violation, but they were unaware, right? So that we're not actually going to move toward expulsion. It could be like a long-range suspension. Um, or it could be we're going to expel for three months, but we're going to provide tutoring during that time. So do know that we would provide a recommendation, hmm. but the expulsion hearing is such that it's a hearing with the board. So it's required by, by yeah. statute. Thank you. Um, the other thing, and just, and I'm going to work harder on it. Oh, co curricular. What's the definition of that again on, on C5 having to do with home study students? So it's any and all essentially after school activities. Oh, see. Co so co curricular is. Yeah. It could be clubs, it could okay, be thank you. drama. Yeah. This term. Cool. Okay, so it's not extracurricular. That's like sports or something. What's no? We even consider sports co-curricular. Yeah. Like it's part of what we do. So, uh, what is the difference between extracurricular and co-curricular? Co-curricular <laughs> is defined as, <laughs> and I can add the definition. Co-curricular means that it's not extra. That we consider it part of what we do. And just so you know, with those things like sports, we still get to get part of an ADM credit yeah. for them. Well, I wouldn't mind a, a definition, but that's yeah, just me. no, that, that's fair uh, enough. We could I, have I, that. That's Easy not a, a fatal flaw. And finally, under student attendance, I must say, and I apologize because because I'm slowing down. But I spent 
more time than I thought I needed to under definitions, and I must say I could not follow a one, two, um, uh, the difference between, I understand now what a truant is, but here you have uh, one, you got students ages six to 16, and then the other one is the students at least 16, but it's, I had trouble following all that, and I'm just, just one of somebody with a fresh set of eyes, and, um, and mine are getting kind of blurry. Um, but I had a trouble following that we got six to 16, who's not excused, and right. fails to enter the school at the beginning of the year, or being enrolled and fails to attend, but then we have a student at least 16 who's enrolled in public school and fails to. So why do we talk about six to 16? Why isn't it six to Because after 16, 18? a parent can unenroll a yep. student, right? So that's what they're trying to capture there. And students are not required by statute to attend school in Vermont until they're age six. So like mm. five-year-olds often will enter kindergarten, right? That's when we enroll them. But a five-year-old is old, it's not actually required to attend school. But they're still considered a truant. Nope. That's not until they turn six. six. No, excuse me, at six, uh, uh, beyond 16. Beyond 16 if they're enrolled, yeah. right? Because they don't have to be enrolled. Oh, so the key word is enroll. Correct. So Vermont law requires parents to send their kids to school 6 to 16. Oh, wow. Look who's here. <laughs> oh, gosh. But not, not under 6. And after 16, a parent can unenroll. They can shut student. the door if you want. A student cannot unenroll themselves until they're 18. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, if a student's 16 in a day, a parent can come in and unenroll them. If they mm -hmm. hadn't unenrolled them and they're still on our books, then they're truant. coming, we would consider them truant. Got it. And the final thing under student attendance, is there any reason the boards, uh, this SU boards, district or SU boards, need to know our administrative rules, procedures, and responsibilities that are set by you? Um, if somebody, in other words, if somebody asks us, are we expected to know, or is that something that we basically say that's in the, and I have no problem with it being with you. The question is, what's our responsibility due diligence to, to know any of that? And uh, I don't have a clear answer to it, so I need guidance. Like you're asking why is the procedure part in the policy because no i like it there it just says that the superintendent's responsible and he shall or she shall do all these things the question is after i'm reading all that is is delegated to the superintendent is and i'm comfortable with that my question is do we need to know anything like questions like excessive absenteeism do we know what that means so i'm just it's a question uh, jamie it's not a yeah, you know, statement I, you shouldn't have to if I'm if we're doing our jobs, right? Like, but certainly, um, it, you know, if there was a parent who came that had concerns about our implementation of those rules and procedures, it would be good for the board to have a sense. Of then, if it means. came to us, we'd certainly need to be apprised. Of Correct. This. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, how do you distinguish between truants and homeschool? Well, homeschoolers are, have to be registered as a homeschool student. The AOE approves them. And we get a list every two weeks um, mm. with our homeschool okay. students living in our, District. within our districts. Interesting. And Christy shares that, and if principals yeah. have a question, like, we're checking on it to make certain that they've been And we enrolled. have used it several times. Okay. And the procedures, they register at the school, or? No, they register with the state, and the state says this is a student living in your district who has now been approved for homeschool. So then they're no longer on our books. They're unenrolled. Just as a matter of curiosity, what do they have to demonstrate to, their, to the state? I think the threshold's pretty low. Okay. It varies by grade level, though. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Different expectations. There used to be some written materials you had to send in at the end of the year. My understanding is that that's not required anymore yeah. that's what I've been told by some families doing it but you know okay 
All right, is there any more questions on this that policy or on any of the other uh, policies? And before I run off. Was, was there a policy where you had to? There is, it came today? after the farm to school. I put action policy adoption. Okay. There are two policies that we've worn for adoption tonight. Okay. Those are B5 and C12, which you've seen in the past. Yeah. Before I head to Granville Hancock, I should be back within 20 minutes, I think. Okay. Any questions about either of those? Our folks are feeling good. Mm -hmm. You're good? Yeah. Okay. And I think Lindy's got 6.5 and you'll adopt and then we've got, I'm probably even gonna miss your celebration That's all morning. Right. Sorry. But I'll watch the video. Just come outside sometime. And then I'll come <laughs> That's true. Put Thanks, your boots guys. on. And That's right. I don't my cowboy boots on tonight. <laughs> okay. Um, so the committee continues to meet around uh, farm to school implementation. Um, over the past month, they've met twice. Uh, Mary Shell is kind of facilitating that for us. And during the time, they've explored some grant options. Okay, cool. So they're in the process of writing a grant. We'll work on it some more tomorrow. Um, they also had a great meeting with Misha Johnson, our school uh, nutrition coordinator, just okay. about what's served, what are the requirements, what sort of things. And are, I think, about to reach out to Ms. Braun to talk about supporting tea gardens and more for outdoor ed um, and how that can implement. And then um, they've also done a great They've kind of done a great job of dividing and going out and learning and bringing things back. Perfect. So uh, we have what's called like a vegetable of the month or harvest of the month through our fresh fruits and veggies program. So like there's different literature and different children's books that they've also um, found out can be shared. So working with the libraries around that nice. to that's, have that as well. That's awesome. So that's where that stands. That's where most of that group's work has been. That's great. Yeah. Any questions? Any questions for 6.5, the Farm to School and Outdoor Education Task Force? We, um, I have a question quickly about yeah. uh, Farm to School. There's a parent in Stockbridge that I know is interested in getting involved. Oh. I'll give you the name. Yes, and is we that can add that. Absolutely. Because she was speaking with me about it. And, oh, yes, yeah. please. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And definitely please express to them that um, this that the board uh, greatly supports this effort and are excited yeah. with what they have done so far. Great. Sounds great. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, if there's, is there any other questions or comments on um, the task force? Okay. Great. Well, then let's move on to the adoption of policies B5 and C12. So back to the policies. So B5. We, this is, I think, the third time we've seen it. Um, and this is uh, policy B5, the uh, employee unlawful harassment policy. So I look for a motion to uh, accept this policy as written. Second. All right, we have a motion moved and second. Is there any discussion on the employee unlawful harassment policy? Great, hearing no discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So moved. Okay, next policy is uh, C12, the prevention of sexual harassment as prohibited by Title IX. Mm -hmm. I move. A second. And we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Now we move on to the best part of the meeting, which is our uh -oh. celebration of learning. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. We love to see what is happening in our schools. So before we begin with the slideshow, I brought a, just a couple of visual aids. Um, and just outside the door is where the tea corner is. And there are, um, you can see the teapot is there. I have a basket with painted rocks and things in there. And I just wanted to explain 
what that is and how I'm using that before I launch into the um, to the slide presentation. So um, each class comes outside. They sit and we sing, oh, what a beautiful morning or what a beautiful afternoon um, every single time consistently. And the kids, um, on one particular rainy day, one of the students said, what? <laughs> <laughs> is everything really going my way? It's raining. And I said, I'm actually really happy it's raining. It hasn't rained in a long time. And so, yeah, everything is going our way, you know. And so just beginning every class in a consistent way with that song. And um, I have a little notebook for Stockbridge and a little notebook for Rochester that I keep in my backpack with a pen. And each class, um, we have the same rules. Have fun. Stay safe. Be where I can see you and you can see me. And then be kind to yourself, to the forest, and to your friends. And so every single day we review the rules. And if I get up to strike one, strike two, strike three for breaking any of those rules, then they don't get their tally mark for the day. They have to have five tally marks in a row consistently before I will go into the basket out there and take out the colored rock. But so far on both campuses, all, all the two concepts we've covered so far, every class has their rock. So they've all earned it. By common sense has been covered and all in reverence has been covered and now we're working on aliveness and agility. So they have to, for aliveness and agility, they have to get across the field before I do, which is not that hard to do. <laughs> but there are some kids that like to dawdle because they think it takes the attention away from the class and what we're doing and so there are some dawdlers. So I'll just start to run a little bit and then they'll start to run. But anyway, that's, and um, last year at the end of the year, a student that graduated from sixth grade gave this stick to me and I thought oh my goodness this is perfect so yes. I, I think it's beautiful he did all these little drawings with sharpie markers and he attached this this um, little minute timer which I thought was cute and just the <laughs> stick itself is lovely but I don't use it I actually have um, developed a thing called the uh, intrepid leader and so each class has a leader mm -hmm. and every student has had a turn to be the leader but then once a month I'll decide on a forest kid of the month and so uh, we do PBIS through the school, which every kid gets acknowledged, but with Forest Kid, not every kid will be acknowledged. It, you have to be every single day following all of those rules, and above all, you have to be kind. That, to me, is the most important thing. So Forest Kid of the Month will get a golden stick. Um, I use uh, rocks, and I put copper wire around it. And mm -hmm. so they get to, during the class, then. Could they you get pass to that around? Leader. Absolutely. It's just a spray-painted <laughs> stick. Both. I'd love to oh, see Oh, yeah, it. this is great. I, and I did not create this. but that's And then in Stockbridge, I have one that's curved on the top and is painted like a rainbow. So two different oh, sticks for two cool. different campuses. So, nice. But they love to do it, and they're in charge of uh, when it's time to go, we review, you know, common, and they say sense, and then I say aliveness, they say agility, so we just, all the concepts are reminded every single day, and then the student who's the leader gets to say, go, and then they all run. <laughs> so, oh yeah, and so I'm just sort of, this year, just saying, okay, I'm, now that I've done this for a few years, I'm stepping back and allowing them to take leadership roles. And um, kids beg me to, to roll the cart. They beg me to help pour the tea. Every single day, the leader gets to pick two people to pour tea. We have two teapots on each campus. You know, it's, it's just developed into this thing where they're kind of running it themselves. Um, I don't think I included any pictures of students pouring tea for each other, but, but it's very sweet. They put the cup between their feet on the ground, and then the tea pourer will go around and bend over and pour half a cup of tea. And then we say a toast, we, we thank the elements and just sort of hold the cups up and then we thank the directions so they're getting north and west and south and east. They're discovering which way that is and all of that. Oh, and then they drink the tea. So I just wanted to express that with the visual aids. <laughs> so how, uh, you said each um, class, go, you, you take each class outside. Mm -hmm. 40 um, minutes. 40 minutes, mm -hmm. how often? So here in, in Rochester, it's Mondays and Wednesdays, 40 minutes for each class, so you K get, to 6. you get through the whole school mm -hmm. in, in one, one day, 40 mm -hmm. minutes, okay. Mm -hmm. Twice, a, minutes, twice, twice a, week. a week, okay. And then in, in Stockbridge, it's Thursdays and Fridays, same okay. thing. And here, um, pre-K couldn't quite fit in on the Mondays and Wednesdays, so I fit them in on Tuesdays. And that's wonderful because it's a longer period of time. It's actually, I stay out there for about an hour and a half. And that gets them out there and gets them really into being there. And just the last couple of weeks, we've started overlapping the sixth grade with mm -hmm. the pre-K, which has been wonderful. It's so good for the sixth graders, and they love it. Like today, they came out because we don't have school tomorrow. So we doubled up pre-K with sixth grade. And as soon as the pre-K kids came around the corner, the sixth graders were like, yeah, they're here. 
So, you know, they're, they're good to them. Like, we carved the pumpkins together. The sixth graders were helping the pre-K kids. It was just, mm -hmm. it's lovely. Nice. So, yeah. So 40 minutes um, is the class time, which is amazing what we can fit into 40 minutes. It really is incredible what we can get done. Because we sing the song and we sit. And I usually do a story. And in Stockbridge, I'm reading a book to the sixth grade right now because it's a book I feel that they need to hear. Um, and I'm considering... I have to read it first, but I'm considering Lost on a Mountain. There's a movie coming mm -hmm. out. It's in Maine. It's a fourth grade level yeah, yeah, book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a friend of mine was just telling me about it. So I have to read it first, but I'm considering reading that to the kids too. Who was so, that? Don't know his name, but he just passed away, I think. Mm -hmm. But he was nine years old and he survived in the woods. Yeah, so I, I thought I thought that there would be a really good book to read to them. So there is, you know, there's a little bit of time at the beginning. We go to the woods. They have probably ten to fifteen minutes of free play which is just amazing because you watch them um, they're they're taking care of their needs you know a kid that likes to climb or needs to climb you want that what stick do do? don't you a kid that needs to climb <laughs> will find a way to climb up um, a kid that needs to walk on a log that's fallen will do that for themselves um, we have a vine now over here in the woods that's just all of a sudden the kids are grabbing a hold of it and swinging I mean just all these body movements that they need to do and then we breathe deeply before they go back inside to ground themselves and get themselves ready for learning. So, yeah. The only thing I could beg for is more time. I mean, <laughs> Lindy's trying. It's hard because there's so many other things that are important too. Um, oh, and the one thing I want to mention in Stockbridge, the second and third grade was doing um, a unit on time. And so the teacher said, can you help in any way? And I was like, yeah, sure. So in, in Stockbridge, we meet at the truss and then there's about a, like a five minute walk or three minute run down. And so I let them go ahead, and I can still see them there because the trees are all cleared out now, so I can see as they go down the corner. But they rush down there and they set up a clock for me before I get there with the rocks. So they put out 12 rocks in the right spots, they draw in the dirt all the numbers, and I'll tell them, set it to 515. So they'll do the <laughs> short stick on the five. Nice. It's wonderful. It really, it's, it's amazing what's coming out of, you know, just the teacher saying, can you support me in any way? And I'm happy to do games with kids. You know, I'll, I'll say, oh, I'm setting it to three, now get in groups of three, or now get in this many, you know, this, a group with this many kids, just change the clock or whatever. And it just is a good way to move and learn. So, and they were saying they didn't know how to tell to the minute. So I'm like, okay, this is, this is gonna be good because we can put little, in the, in the dirt we can draw. Even in the right. snow we can draw lines as Absolutely. a clock, so, yeah. Anyway, so we can get into this then too. That's the, uh, the outdoor philosophy, I believe I shared it with you last year, but these two photos I took today, um, the little boy on the left and the girl there on the right, that's the stick that one child gets to hold up when we do our thank you to the north and to the west and do all the directions. And they point with the stick to the different ways. So outdoor education provides, yeah, anyway, you've got the philosophy. Yeah, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> to develop positive relationships with the environment, others and ourselves through interaction with the natural world. These relationships are essential for well-being and sustainability of individuals, society, and our world. Nature is the true teacher. And every class, actually, you know, 40 minutes long, the weather can change, as you know, in Vermont. And so today, at one point, it was the rain had started to freeze a little bit, so we got really quiet and listened to it, and they were saying, that would be sweet. You know, just, you can't learn that inside. Right. So that's what this is saying. Being outdoors builds resilience and a connection with nature, which cannot be learned at a desk inside a building. And that's somebody from the Forest Service in that photo visiting. Being outside provides time to breathe. Research has proven that three deep breaths is enough to regulate the body. We practice breathing in this way at the beginning and end of every outdoor class. And that's a rock that's in Stockbridge. And the fourth, fifth, and sixth know that it's called an erratic, which is something that dropped off a glacier. The little kids don't know the name of it, but the bigger kids do know. That's great. Yeah. And the, the preschool calls it the big rock. <laughs> and to get three-year-olds to the big rock, we use sixth graders in Stockbridge. <laughs> it's quite a challenge. They're all running in all different directions, but we get them there. <laughs> and there are the materials, the herbs, the tea, the thermos, the cups, the kids, the teacher, the fresh air. And Coyote's Guide is what I use. It's a book that... Um, basically outlines the different concepts that I use. And I love that book. It's getting pretty worn out. <laughs> We've had some field trips this year, and one of our trips was to learn more about mushrooms. And on the right, that's Danny Sands's hand, and he's wearing a fabulous mushroom shirt. 
but he took time out of out of work to come and, and be with these kids. He doesn't even have a kid at school anymore. His yeah. daughter's now oh, in Middlebury. But he was like, yeah, I'll come. He's he a forager for he sure. He really is. He's, yeah. a, he's a genius. He really is. And he's so excited to share that with the kids. Yeah. Uh, just a, a neighbor of mine is a, a mushroom fanatic, mm. and she knows everything and anything about mushrooms and which ones are edible or not, and mm -hmm. recipes and anything else. If you need somebody to, yes, well, that might be into that to show to tell the stories, uh, then I'm more than happy to share. And Thank I you. think I think she'd have a ball. Thank you. Uh, we'll have her on our good. next year trip, or maybe um, even in the spring, because it's good to forage mushrooms in the spring and the fall. Yeah. So that'd and be we great. have some Thank phenomenal. You. Mushrooms up, uh, our trees up in uh, Vulture Mountain, I must say, are just huge. I mean, they're just layered and layered <laughs> oh, and layered. It. and So, yeah, it's, it's magical <laughs> stuff. So I'll, uh, let me give you their name. I will. I appreciate that. Oh, through Lindy. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. So this, um, these pictures were just taken last week. So this is the All School Celebration, which was linked to PBIS. And Lindy said, are you willing to carve the pumpkins? I'm like, oh, yeah. So there we were in the front of Rochester. That On the left is a picture of a sixth grader and a pre-K kid working together. Mm -hmm. And that's just, yeah, that's just so sweet. And then there, you know, obviously there's a pumpkin. And then this picture on the right was today, which is why I smell like a campfire, because we put the pumpkin seeds in a basket. And, then and you put them over the fi yeah, open fire? Yeah, the fire. How'd it work? It was great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, that was, um, let's see, I added a little bit of oil and just salt. Yeah. And it was fine. Yeah, just like the little wire basket. <laughs> that was a really good time. So that was today. Forest Service brought Smokey Bear. I always thought it was the bear, but it's not. It's Smokey oh, Bear. I did <laughs> too. Both yeah, I thought it was Smokey the uh -huh. Bear. Uh-huh. We've always said it, but they corrected us this time very okay. clearly. So we learned about how to be safe, but we also learned um, controlled burns. So the older kids were learning about how sometimes fires are set mm -hmm. with intention. And so that's a, a Stockbridge parent there on the right. Her name's Lindsay, and she helped organize it last year and this year. And then that's the pre-K in Stockbridge. With Smokey, but he also came to this campus, so that was nice. And then these are the concepts I've shared with you before common sense, self sufficiency, aliveness, and agility, awe and reverence, inquisitive focus, caring and tending, service to community, and quiet mind. That last one is the biggest challenge and one that I feel yeah. they need because their attention spans are getting shorter and shorter, I've noticed in the 29 years I've been a teacher. So to be able to just sit as many years as you are <laughs> old and stare at something and to try to look at it, that all in reverence piece is looking at it like it's the first time you've seen it. You know, they don't quite get that as they get older in elementary. So that's a big one, the quiet mind and the awe and reverence are important. That's our teapot here in Rochester. We have different teapots. One of them broke last year, and about a week later, a little first grade kid had stopped at a thrift shop with her mom and bought the most beautiful teapot with a rose on top. I just brought oh, it. Your teapot good. broke. Here's a new teapot. <laughs> so yeah, they, they really care a lot about what we're doing. They really, really are buying into it for mm -hmm. sure. They're yeah. invested. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. It is. And there's our tea. And there they are. You can see the girl on the right. She's actually closing her eyes as we're doing the, you know, the thank you to the directions and, and the elements. And then that's echinacea, which is, you know, obviously it's the purple cone flower, but it's mm -hmm. all of it's edible. All of it can be made into tea. Mm -hmm. And on the, let's see, I think it was September when we were getting our orders out, and I thought, I'm not buying as much from Amazon if I can avoid it, right? So <laughs> I put an ad in the Front Porch Forum, and my mudroom, second year in a row, my mudroom just filled up with just herbs, like just, here you go, bags and bags of all <laughs> kinds of things, so, yeah, which is lovely. I mean, I make sure that I know what it is, and I did take, take a class to know what herbs are safe, so I won't, I won't <laughs> cook up something that someone put in the mudroom without knowing what it is, but I am pretty versed in it, so. Today we had goldenrod. It was a good treat. Oh, yeah. And then this just, this moment right here was so beautiful, and I just thought this is a great way to end, you know, talking about it. But these two girls just came upon this moss, and they were like, wow, you know, just look at that and touch that. And so that was it close up on the right. But I didn't make them pose for that picture. That's the kind of moments that I see all day long. It's just mm -hmm. lovely. I have pictures of kids with woolly bears and just, you know, they just are, they're, only, they're connecting with nature in this way, so, yeah. But thank you for the opportunity and the freedom to be able to do this program. I feel very mm -hmm. blessed that it's able to happen. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Love it. They're doing yeah. a wonderful job. Well, the kids love it. They just. So she's also challenged every class to see how many towns in oh, the state of Vermont they can travel to. Okay. And so she sent something out to families oh, and nice. as they travel to different places, they can send a picture and a little something written up about the different places. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of families who have been going to different oh, places that's great. throughout. That's right, I forgot about that. Yes, yeah. and- the um, passport. Yep, and yeah. classes, when oh, they yeah. like go yeah. on a field trip to somewhere different, they like come back and write something up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've got yeah we've got a couple of paragraphs from pre K from yeah. when we went to Pine Hill Park, so we can mark Rutland. Um, yeah, so it's Northeast Kingdom hasn't been visited yet, so we might have to like try to up the ante on that. Um, and then then the um, the sustainability going up to Winooski was yeah. really incredible too. I forgot to include that in here, but um, yeah, there, there'll be there'll be a project coming soon that you'll hear about that's yeah. going to come out of that. So. Yeah, can you yeah. speak to what that was? Yes, it was incredible, actually. So I took, um, I asked Mr. Robert in sixth grade who to take, and he gave me, mathematically, there were two girls and one guy who's in fifth grade but is on an upper grade level because the project's going to include math that we're going to work on. So we went up to Winooski, and it was through Shelburne Farms. Okay. It's there, uh, and I'm going to take a class probably this coming summer in it, too, um, because they offer this for teachers to get versed in it. But it's talking about the United Nations and what we need to do to keep our earth sustainable. And what was fascinating was these kids all sat together with other kids from other schools. And all of these kids, these young kids, are aware of the climate and concerned about the climate and want to try to figure out how they can reach out and help. So it was, it was a great experience. And there'll be another event in the spring that will go to sort of cap off the year as well. So Nice. Yeah. And a lot of the people through the Farm to School grant are also involved with Shelburne Farms, yeah. so it's a lot of the same people. Overlap. And I don't remember how exactly I got connected, but I, I made the right phone call to the right person. <laughs> and, and they were like, well, bring some kids. I was like, all right. So we didn't take a bus. We just got in a car with a parent and um, you know, did the insurance and made sure everything was on the up and up as far as safety for the kids. But it was a fabulous day. It didn't cost hardly anything to go. Right. So there we were. <laughs> And learning all the concepts about sustaining the world, you know, that was really very right, powerful. To, to see beyond um, our forest here. Or to yeah, beyond. we're just here. This is right. it, right? Right. How does this relate to the bigger picture? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Indeed. And it was a beautiful day, the trees along the way, because we went when the, it was peak. It was a gorgeous, yeah. gorgeous trip for those kids. And then, of course, we wrote a paragraph about Winooski. <laughs> we, got back. we can say that we've been to Winooski. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Phil, did you have a comment? Yeah, or? a comment a question. The comment is that it's so special because what you're doing, it seems to me, we all need to be able to calm down, let our minds relax, mm -hmm. uh, let go, literally letting go in that process. And that is an age restricted. And so mm -hmm. kids very, and you see it in the classrooms much more than I do. I'm older, but... What you're doing is is showing them those skills and those abilities to be able to say it's okay, mm -hmm. and I'm going to think, and I'm going to share, and relax, and be calm, and that should also benefit the propensity of students back in the classroom to act out, because mm -hmm. they're learning some skills by saying, no, I'm just going to, I'm just, uh, I'm just going to be mindful and mm -hmm. be with the moment. So that's the first thing I think is is critical. The second thing was a question is. Is there any continuity or thought about um, continuing this initiative uh, across uh, the elementary school districts in our SU and also to middle school? When I think about middle school, mm -hmm. and we're talking about all sorts of things going on, mm -hmm. I would think uh, it's not necessarily the ex exactly the same things, but what you're, the core concepts that you are sharing, I think, is valuable um, right through uh, K through 12. So I just, I wish Jamie was here or Lindy, uh, Lindsay, do you have well, any? I can, I can answer yeah, to that. I was last, say Amy year, knows. last year we had a group of us. There are people that are, there is an initiative and people are starting to get into the idea of being outdoors. And so the Coyotes Guide came out of some of the discussions that I had with another teacher from Chelsea who is using it as well. And I've linked it to the report card. So I actually do a report card that's linked right to those concepts. So that's the standard that I'm using. So it is starting to spread a little. And I know Bethel has an amazing program with a woman named Bana who's there, who is like an Alaskan. Right, for the middle school. She's program. amazing. Yeah. She, like you want her on your zombie team kind of person. You know, she's like amazing. So, so I know that that's happening in Bethel. Right. For sure. 
Oh, and I didn't mention, um, when they get their five tally marks in a row, yeah. um, I've got flint and steel this year. I spent some money on flint and steel, which is like the idea of like starting a fire just with the flint and the steel rubbing against it. And um, so as soon as they get that, then I put out plates that are covered in foil and dryer lint that I drag from my house. <laughs> and they sit there. And I think in this campus, there might be five kids who have been successful. Mm -hmm. And in Stockbridge, maybe three. So, and that, that's a good thing too, because they get so mad when they can't do something. They're like, I can't do it. I'm like, you know, maybe next time we have five more tally marks, I'll pull it out again and we'll try again, you know, yeah. and, and you're, you'll get it eventually. But they get, they get really frustrated at when they can't. And then, you know, we work through it, like, just take a breath. Sometimes you can't do something and it is, oh, okay, it's okay. So um, that I learned from Bonna when we got together was mm -hmm. the flint and steel. I got that from her. So we are relating to each other. Plus, we have that group of people on our PD days. All the outdoor educators are all in there at the same time. So, yeah. That's cool. But yeah, I would like to, and I'll just put this out here. I've, I've talked with Lindy and with Jamie. I want all the kids who are struggling in the building, like, give them to me. Let me have them. I'll take them outside and have them outside. I feel like it'll be really good for them. So I definitely feel like. You can feel the, the anxiety from a kid who struggles to sit still inside when he comes outside. And I say he because most of the time it's boys, but they take a breath and they get relaxed and they can do a lot more when they have that space. Mm -hmm. um, these were painted by a first grader for his PVIS. He, he reached his goal and yeah. so I took him outside and he was the one that sprayed them. So That's great. they're always begging me like, can I go outside with you? Do you need any help? So yeah, I would love to expand it into helping with some behavior issues because they're, I mean, the behavior issues are here and how do we address them? So that's something I'd like to investigate at some point too, so. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so you're welcome. Thank you thank for listening. You. Yeah, thank you very much. That, mm -hmm. that was really wonderful. Great. Excellent. If there's any, no further questions, comments? I know we could talk about this all night. <laughs> <laughs> um, we will move on to FY25 board goals and possible actions. So Stay Bill and um, JC. Actually, probably in order. Christy's pretty good about that. Yeah, we're worked on um, updating. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, uh, I meant to say that. Usually we say to guests, thank you for coming. You're welcome to stay. But it's, you're welcome. I know. I'm like, I don't know how to make sure. But you're welcome. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, excellent. So uh, Bill and Justine worked on updating um, board goals. The um, new language is in bold. Um, and I guess I will t hand that right over to... Um, Justine or to Bill to take it away. I'll kick off and then uh, JC will um, help where I'm screwed up. One is that the mission statement is in bold because last April we revised our mission statement. Um, and I think it's powerful and we just saw an example of fulfilling that mission statement right here in the presentation tonight about outdoor and, and natural learning. Um, so that's, that's probably, um, the under budget that we can afford, um, it looks like the state is going to be, uh, I've, Jamie, help me whether they've already done it or will do it, having, uh, re, uh, constituting, uh, spending thresholds they that have was have. removed a couple yeah. of years. And so that, uh, measure under the budget we can afford, uh, has been, changed and I just we wanted to also you to know that and Jamie's keeping us all appraised that the Commission on the Future of Public Education in Vermont um, is, is actively engaged and they are going to be making recommendations and for immediate changes in December and the legislature will see who, what they come up with but that puts the whole this whole second half of the academic year in having to do with funding and mm. funding for next year and our budgeting um, with a question mark. And it's just something we all need to be aware of and keep in the back of our minds. Under capital facilities, um, we have this uh, vote tomorrow on yes or no on uh, having the town, recommended that the town of Rochester um, 
purchase the building and and basically repurpose it for the public good and we have a responsibility whether the vote is yes or no to be prepared and act appropriately in this uh, I think um, certainly Jamie and Amy and the whole um, the whole repurpose and efforts worked very well together and, and almost doing mission impossible so we'll see how that is but it seems to me one of our goals needs to be okay we need to be able to respond appropriately under planning that's brand new we've got a um, a task force that we're going to be appointing and then that task force is going to um, create a community survey un undertake that survey and then analyze that survey um, and return those results to the board so it seems to me that's an important goal that we need to be we're going to be um, managing and uh, under communication community involvement, we we thought it str we recommended that we strengthen go beyond communications to community involvement, and that really, if you haven't noticed that we each year I went on the board, um, our administration and their team has been focusing on what it means to be a community school that we are community schools and community schools. The first word is community, and that is how do we engage? How do we connect with? We have a our superintendent showing up at uh, bistros and and sub shops and coffee shops to connect we've got um, the thing we just did last week where mm -hmm. we invited the parents in on social emotional uh, we have at the Tunbridge Brief we're, we're tr trying to do this as much as we can and it just it's just a way to remind us with that additional wording community involvement that uh, that's for real and uh, um, and we've got um, the footnote that we added at the bottom that Justine um, did uh, talking about how we connect and uh, the importance of that connection. And, um, and finally, under board governance, it's an, uh, we'd like to think that we are, in it, why not in writing, to say that we're committed to develop our board to be the best board it can be. And so we thought that was um, important to, to say and then be cognizant of as we go through the year. Um, and obviously uh, we'll know on board governance the results because we evaluate ourselves at the end of every year. So anyway, that's the highlights. Uh, Justine, what, do you, what have you got? What did I miss? It looks good to me. I mean, I, I mean, it's right. It's all written right there. I, I kind of went down a rabbit hole when I was trying to make edits to this because I just felt like um, I wanted more action. Uh, action items or something. It just feels like, um, you know, we have been talking about a lot of this stuff for years and we have been talking about how we need to find better ways to take action. So, um, Bill kind of reined me in and letting me know that this is not necessarily where we develop the action items, but um, I just, that's why I added the support and enhance what we've already begun. Um, make sure we re, you know, revisit these goals regularly so we can decide whether we're taking enough action or not. And not kicking the can down the road as we put in the. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I think it sounds good. I think um, this is good work. Um, my one comment was is just on the wording of the uh, task force that we've appointed. Yes. Um, just the that the word analyze, um, because the motion the the creation was not for the task force to come up with an opinion to to synthesize and, and make a recommendation to the board, which is when I think of the word analyze, that's what mm -hmm. I think that they're doing. So what, it was more of like summarize. Okay. Justine, are you okay with that? Yeah, yep, uh, I agree. Yeah, and you corrected that before. So <laughs> that's okay, You're I just, sorry about that. Uh, that, that is fine. Um, but yeah, I think this, I think this is great. Um, you know, is really, 
uh, hearing the good work that um, the groups have been doing on um, this is bronze class and then the farm to school like that just makes me feel like we do have a moment momentum going forward um, and you know it is not in an uh, action item list but I feel like we're we're going still going down the right path um, so I'm encouraged by that um, and I think that uh, this these board goals will just help facilitate us to um, you know keep moving forward um, so is there any uh, discussion on these board goals Uh, yeah, I look for a um, motion to uh, accept these uh, board goals with the as written with the one change mm -hmm. of yep. uh, to change the word analyze in number four of the planning to the word summarize. So, so I have a motion. Do I have a second to uh, adopt these? I second. Uh, is there any discussion? Great. Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Great. So moved. Thank you for your hard work, Bill and Justine, getting that done. Excellent. Great. Well, let's move on to draft two, student support and a universal learning uh, draft budget. It's towards the end of your packet. Might be quicker to go from the back side. Budget on the screen's the wrong one. That was from last meeting. I see it says draft one. So. Oh, and you put you put dates, dates on it for me. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So this draft that I emailed to you all on Friday, the update that I made to the student support budget was we were using original projections of 18% for the health insurance and then VHI released their rates. So I was able to bring that down to 11.9%. So 11.9% is the insurance increase? The health, yep health insurance increase and that's locked in now uh that's what was submitted and just a pending final approval from green mountain care board got it okay boy that's huge yeah it is <laughs> so that brought the student support section down to a sixty seven thousand dollar increase uh can eight point six seven percent and that calculates out to 0.021 cents using the fiscal year 25 one cent on the tax rate. Okay. And then support our general education draft one. There were no changes there to FTEs. So overall, that's an increase of $43,104.53, equates to 4.05%, which is 0 0.013 cents. Okay, and um, is there any changes or is this um, status quo? Status quo. Okay, and I'm sorry if you said that and I didn't pick up on it. So of course these tax rates they're going to be fairly close, right? Right. But you know every year a penny does change a little. What makes up a yeah. penny? So just mm -hmm. know like once we get all those details, you know. Right. January, you'll see exactly what a penny means for you. But these are good estimates. I mean, they're yeah. not going to change that much. No, it is helpful to just see where, where what we're getting is. for yeah. what. Exactly. I, I was hoping this would help the board yeah. not just look at percentage increase, but get a sense of what that means penny wise. Right. So, you know, based on all staffing right now um, and estimated salary increases and benefits, you're looking at, you know, 3.4 cents. Mm -hmm. on the tax rate with your staffing. So is the um, the difference from the last year, from FY25 to 26, if it's status quo, is it mostly have to do with insurance and um, benefits? And step increase, right? Like uh, and in, yeah, okay. 
and of course new hires, right? Some people <coughs> could come in with uh, a full family, right. a yeah. full family plan, okay. or the other person might only had a single plan. Okay. All those things. And We're adjusting for your current staff. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I. Um, this is the bones of of our education, so uh, it's really where we need to be spending the money. So, um, I don't. Does anybody have uh, comments, uh, questions? Do, I, yep. Go ahead. Got a comment. Uh, we've got guidance. Uh, the FTEs went down slightly. Uh, regular ed, uh, educational uh, professionals down, and then we've got school-based clinician and behavioral specialist. So is one to replace the other, or are we, is this math actually gonna give us more? More. Uh, yeah. More assistance help where we need it. So uh, we're looking at, um, is that, am I reading this correctly? You are, yeah. so yeah, so that school-based clinician and the behavioral specialist positions those are full-time people in your building five days a week across nice. your sure, two campuses. The two campuses. Yeah, so yep. you're getting two point nice. OFTs there yeah. for the trade-off of a <laughs> point four. So you're essentially getting 10 days of mm. services in trade-off of two. Yeah. And the reason we can do that is, is that by contracting services with Claire Martin Centers for a clinician, but also a behavioral specialist, those, they're able to build day, down Medicaid funding yeah. Um, to offset their salaries and benefits, meaning for their staff. Mm -hmm. And we're not responsible to do all that paperwork. They take care of that <laughs> themselves. Um, so it's a c straight contracted service for us. When it's working really well, the whole idea is that you really shouldn't know, right? Like they function like an employee of ours. They should mm -hmm. be at staff meetings. They sh they're at team meetings. Like the other night, I know that your school-based clinician was here for the community engagement night. Um, and so, you know, the idea is to try to get more services in front of our kids, but to do it in a way that it's like fiscally sustainable. But certainly still having a school counselor three days a week, because uh, they provide, you know, universal instruction to students in regards to the classroom setting, where the school-based clinician's doing more small group or one-to-one -one counseling mm -hmm. on a regular basis with the kids. Well, I think that's a great way. That's a win-win because my impression is that Gifford could use some financial. Well, this is Claire Martin. Okay, Claire, not Claire Martin is separate from Gifford. Okay, but um, they. Okay, this is Claire Martin, not Gifford. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Misspoke. Great. Yeah. Anybody else have any comments or questions on this draft? Okay, uh, and next draft. Next month you'll get, yeah, December you get the whole Get package. the whole shoot and shebang, okay. Yep, which, you know, means estimating tuitions, things of that nature. That all, of course, gets dialed in more in January when we actually have announced tuitions. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we'll carry a percentage increase based on what we think it's going to play out at. Speaking um, of announced tuitions, when is that due? for us to announce tuitions. It'll be your January meeting. I had to have them in by January 15th by statute. Okay, I just was wondering if we had, if, we, if it would behoove us to do it in December, if, but we'll have a meeting early enough in January that we don't have to, okay. Yeah, we won't need a special meeting. Won't need a special meeting then, okay. Great, uh, is there, if there's no further questions or comments on the, um, Expenditure budget. Uh, did you want to comment on the next uh, page, the capital improvements, or it's really just this for was just our an update, knowledge? So you guys knew we did, we're doing it for all the boards, yeah. just to give them an update on where they're at in regards to their reserve funds. And it was actually really funny because earlier in the day I said, you know, I'd like some accounting for for our. And literally an hour later, I didn't say anything to Tara, but she <laughs> emailed it to me. It just showed up. I was like, she read so my mind. Exciting. So I was like, yeah. Um, okay. Was, 
Uh, Will you uh, be providing us your guidance and recommendations relative to uh, what we need to include in our uh, FY26 budget relative to capital? Yeah, we'll be needs. carrying a number next month and we'll explain where that number comes from. Okay. It'll come from your capital and facilities plan. Yeah. Which I, I'll connect it back to. When we well, there's two parts. One is coming from this plan. The second thing is what we should include in our budget to supplement or, or no the, the plan has what you should be putting away every yes. year okay so that every year number we're going to need to carry either by putting money aside yes or budgeting in your budget yeah. okay so you'll have that next yep. month Thank you. okay wonderful great well if there's no further questions uh we will move on to the uh community engagement task force update so as you know we I've created a community task force um, to survey the um, unified district stakeholders and to uh, summarize those results and report back to the board so the board can use it as they are develop the uh, district's strategic plan. Um, the task force is to be made up of uh, three parent guardians, Stockbridge, Rochester, and Hancock Granville, our tuition district. Um, do we have interest in? We do. We have names. Three? Yep. Okay. And uh, committed? Yeah, I mean, I think the ultimate commitment is once the dates are picked, right? Yeah, okay. We're off. But yes, they're okay. all very committed. Oh, that's great. Okay. And um, so we are looking for two community members. We did receive an email from um, a community member that was interested. Um, and uh, I think, though, we wanted to send out a letter to the greater yeah. community because that, that piece kind of got missed. Um, we talked to teachers and, and everybody else. We want to definitely engage we have only had one interest from the community, yes. I guess. Is the, yes. So we want to kind of put it out there and yes. try to uh, get some more interest, uh, hopefully get an, a second member that would okay. be interested. So um, Jamie was going to send out a letter. Yeah, I had a letter that I had. I, I apologize. I should have done this before I left in October. I had a letter that just kind of explained the process. I think it was a really good community connection to let the community know that we're engaging in this. Yeah. And then I just asked interested community members to send me just a brief letter of interest of why. And then I shared those letters of interest with the board. So when they went to go finalize the community members, they just had some background about why folks were interested. Yeah. And so um, we'll go ahead and do that. So I'll, I'll go ahead yeah, and, and get that letter out. I think it's a good thing to just let folks know what we're doing too, and but also yeah. then solicit interest. Yeah. So, so when are we? That said, are we talking about a, a target of January of kicking off the task force? My and, goal and, and was the support. My goal was to get the task force in place for your next December meeting oh. finalized, yeah. right? And with that, then connecting with the task force directly to see is there a possibility to to have a meeting that literally just to like identifies a chair for the task force and did some nuts and bolts things like that prior to the holidays if not possible then certainly the first of the year yeah, I was gonna say meet. but I was hoping possibly to be able to do the nuts and bolts meeting prior yeah. and then start the real work of the task force in the beginning January. of the year and that's when our facilitator was going to be available was right after the first that she will be yes oh so, great so yeah, that makes that that, will be. that yeah. time frame makes perfect sense just because december suddenly gets quite it gets, busy with it gets quite december. busy but yeah. now she she's finalizing some work that she's done in the white river unified district this month so she was ready to go in january that's great great okay um so uh we were looking for two teachers same yep. thing we have some interest we have yep, some potential interest. okay and uh the principal do we <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, so then we're down to board members. Um, has anybody who would like to, um, we're looking for two. Just so the board knows the just time requirements that I've seen in the last task force, they've been meeting twice a month. But then as they were wrapping things up, they have met on a more regular basis sometimes. So. I would say think about twice a month as a commitment, probably, to keep good momentum. But right. 
Right, because we also, uh, I don't have what we had talked about for an end date before, but I think we were looking at a six six month. Yeah, commitment. I mean, my goal would, I'd like, I was going to kind of push them to say it would be really good to have that report in June so that we can take it and possibly have a retreat on yeah. it. In yeah, August, yeah, that'd be really what great. I was thinking. Okay. So, before the end of school. Yeah. I think that's probably doable for I do with, a, with a facilitator, yeah. and and we kind of have. This is we're not reinventing the wheel here either. It's been done. In other they districts. have some quite yes, exactly. At least the model around surveying the community and right. getting postcards out to get information back, and that at least they've just gone through that. Okay. Yeah, that really helps. I think it should help. It may, it may speed the process. Up. Yeah. My sense is quite a bit actually. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So we're looking for two volunteers of board members. Patrick. I'll do it. All right. Thank you, Patrick. This is. I can't commit until I know the results of next tomorrow. tomorrow's uh, vote. Fair if enough. I say yes, I'm going to be very, be very busy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's a no. You're still going to be busy on the other side. <laughs> uh, so let's just say that uh, if it goes, if it, it, you're saying whether it's a yes or a no, right? So I, if it, are you available if it's a yes? No, it's I'm not available if it's a yes because we'll be moving forward with a lot of Gotcha. Okay. Right. So we need these. Okay. Um, I think we need somebody from Rochester. That would be my... Are you interested? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Cynthia. Great. I think that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I agree. Yeah, I think it's nice to have a board member from, from each. each. Yeah, representing each. Okay. Great. So we'll get that uh, letter out to the community members. Like I said, we've already um, had one uh, community member express interest, so that's wonderful. And uh, we'll put the letter out to be able to get some more feedback back and then we'll solidify finalize those in finalize December. those in December okay that sounds wonderful okay well let's move on to possible action uh, White River Credit Union authorized signers I'm gonna explain Tara this hasn't been updated with your new treasurer so we need to do so okay so this is um, to to put our current treasurer, Julie Groppi, and Tara Weatherall on as authorized signers, just those two. So, so move. So I make a motion to approve. <laughs> I have a written it's motion. I have. I, got it. I, got I can it. give it to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Motion to approve Julie Groppi and Tara Weatherall with will be the authorized signatures on the two accounts currently at White River Credit Union, account ending in 27 and 31. Account 27 consists of a savings and a checking account, and account 31 is just a savings account. These two authorized signers will replace anyone who is currently listed as an authorized signer on these accounts. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, is there any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Great. So moved. Okay. Uh, do we have any hires, new hires or resignations? No resignation. We do have a resignation. Uh, Dominic Smith, who has been our first and second grade teacher at Rochester, um, has given us this two weeks, which will be up this Friday. The, I believe that's the eighth. Yes, the eighth will be his last day. Uh, Linda Gendro, our literacy interventionist, will be stepping in for the first part of the day to do literacy and humanities instruction. And then uh, Face Every, our math interventionist, will be stepping in for the second part of the day to do math and science. Um, and this is on a temporary basis? To... This is while we advertise, yes. Okay. And how does um, pulling them into the classroom affect uh, other students? We're going to finalize our um, intervention schedules on Wednesday because teachers have uh, different in-service tomorrow. But we um, 
right now, it looks like some students will be supported uh, through our special education interventionists. There's some groups that line up kind of nicely. Okay. And then we're also able to do a little bit of a flip-flop, like there was a lot of math intervention happening in the morning with some other groups and um, so literacy. So they're gonna be able to flip-flop. So normally a kid's been going out for part of their literacy block right now. Okay. Instead, during that time, they'll potentially go out for their math intervention at that time. And then during math in the afternoon, they'll go out for some literacy intervention. Is for those specific like students? Yeah. For those specific students. Okay. We so typically pull students for literacy intervention during, during the literacy, literacy block and math yes. intervention for the during the math block. What Lindy's saying is, if the time doesn't line up, we just may have to pull kids for literacy intervention during the math block. So, so it's like the blocks, it, it's the whole school doing literacy at the same time when you're saying a block, or you're saying no. within the classroom? So With, Within the instructional block. So <laughs> part of why we do longer instructional blocks is so that kids don't miss first instruction, meaning right. like whole group mini lesson, right? Mm -hmm. We'll pull them when the teacher's meeting with small groups already right. to provide small group instruction. So instead of Jamie doing his read to self while the teacher's working with a group of four and some kids are doing writing, Jamie, instead of just doing read to self, Jamie's going to then go work with the reading interventionist mm -hmm. to get a double dip. So I'll work with Lindy, my classroom teacher, during that 90-minute block but then I'll also work with the reading interventionist. Uh -huh. And what it looks like right now is like during that read to self time, they'll be able to go for math. Math, they might have to go for math, okay. Instead of literacy. And then during math, when they would have some independent work time, mm -hmm. they would go for literacy. It, okay. we're, still, we're trying to make it work. We're trying, trying to make, to make it, it work, work and okay. ensure that kids don't miss whole group instruction. Right. Okay. And so there's a little bit of shuffling, but I think Okay, and hopefully it's a temporary basis. Exactly. Okay. Are they behind? Uh, which kind of, uh, the kids the, with the intervention or the no the classroom. Um, they are not as far in the Bridges be. curriculum um, in math, so, so it would also be math. helpful to have mm -hmm. someone like Faye, who has lots of experience, be able to kind of okay, so it's actually, drive. Mm -hmm. that too as well so a group that started the year fairly on track just getting them back on pace okay. too mm -hmm. so it'll benefit the that yes. group it will. okay all right uh, is there any other questions or comments on that okay well, let's move on to public comment Do you have a public comment, Keith? Uh, yeah, well, one is I would uh, enjoy the opportunity to serve on the community task force. Um, and then I do have a question for the board. I recently saw an article, I'm not sure where, but that the um, RSUD would be an anchor tenant in the uh, high school should the purchase be approved by the Rochester community? Is that true? So we have um, spoken with the um, repurposing committee and we have uh, expressed interest in um, using the space that is over in the, um, that would be available in the um, high school building to help expand our programming. Okay, so we currently operate two buildings with a student population of approximately 100, and you're considering leasing additional space? Um, yes. I'm a little confused. <laughs> yep, uh, no, there's definitely some opportunities over in that high school building. Um, specifically, there is a full theater that uh, we would love to access uh, a couple times a year to put on uh, productions for the kids. Um, there is uh, possibly going to be other opportunities. A kiln uh, over there. Yeah, um, art, uh, expanded art over there with the kiln. And um, so there's definitely some opportunities to be had. 
And so we definitely want to explore, and if we can provide more for our kids, that's what we want to do. Okay, and will you provide financials to the community on the costs of leasing this additional space and uh, outline and outline the use of that additional space? Yes, absolutely. We would definitely be very transparent about um, what the opportunities are there and what ones we would be taking advantage of and um, how much that would um, cost. So, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, because only because the phrase anchor tenant is a little scary uh, and that an anchor tenant is usually a large user of <laughs> leased space. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand um, that phrase can um, have – rub you wrong so um but uh yeah no we definitely will uh have full accountability and uh understanding of what our use would be in um there so thank you and yes thank you for y your um interest at this yeah. point in time the board has made no commitment uh with regards to that space we have not signed any paperwork with them we have just expressed our interest um, that we would love like to use the space should it be available for expanded programming. Okay, uh, so I look forward to seeing the details. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you, and thank you for expressing interest in our um, task force. Uh, I'm sure you heard Jamie will be sending out a letter to see if it can drum up. Um, we're still looking for at least one more um, community member, so um, that would be great. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, uh, executive session is next. So, um, I make a motion to go into executive session uh, in regards to a student matter, and I invite our administration to join. Second the motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Coming out of executive session, uh, make a motion to direct our superintendent to work with the family to address their concern and to provide additional supports and to report back to the board next month on their progress. Second the motion. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 So moved. Excellent. Um, so our next meeting is December 2nd in Stockbridge. Um, for future agenda items, I would like uh, to um, read and discuss the FY24 school district budgeting resource. Um, it's about a 12-page, um, and it was sent out by the VSBA. I think that would be share it too. Yeah, yeah, so Jamie can share it so that everybody can read through it. Um, talks about its budgeting and uh, I think it'd be a, a good um, a good learning resource for us to read and discuss. I like that and I wanted to suggest that we we haven't finished our uh, going over our scorecard. On oh, the and, yes, yeah, let's do, do that. that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Have a chance to get a copy of it and look at it. Right. OK, our scorecard. I'm sorry. I, no. OK. Uh, if, if anybody has any other future agenda items, please just get in touch with me or Jamie. All right, make a motion to adjourn. So move. All right, all in favor? Aye.